Alright, so hi Alice Tiffany. Um, I just got back home from dialysis. Obviously. And so much stuff happened in dialysis today. It didn't affect my writing at all. So I'm not really upset right now. It is this isn't technically a rant, this is just me spilling tea and telling what the hell happened. <laughs> um but yeah, I wanted to share what happened because I know I've been complaining about the hashtag noisy negro in dialysis. Um, I think, I don't, I don't want to phrase it that way. I was about to say, I don't think he's going to be around much longer. I don't want to say it that way, like he's dying. He's not dying. I hope he's not dying. But, um, you know, I was seated next to him again. He was quiet, so I assume he was sick. Because he was, he didn't make a peep the whole time he was there. And I got some writing done. Yeah, I got some writing done. And he was, he was complaining about his foot. Because anytime anything jumps off around me, I am all ears to, to make sure it doesn't directly affect me. <laughs> so I heard him complaining about his foot hurting. And, you know, I... I'm sitting right next to him, so I can see everything as it's happening. Why am I smiling so damn much? And, you know, the nurse pulled the sheet back and everything, and his foot is, like, hella swollen. I mean, like, swollen. Um, and it wasn't like, okay, he's heavy with fluid. He said something must have bitten him. Now, this makes me remember that Tuesday, he cursed up a storm Tuesday um, because he found a spider on his blanket. So I don't know if that came from the nursing home with him or what. I haven't had any creepy crawlies on me um, in dialysis, thank goodness. You know, the occasional fly gets in, but I mean, you know, that's life. But I mean, you know, I everybody was saying they think that he did something bit him. Everybody was thinking um, it's cellulitis. So I freaked myself out going and looking at cellulitis. Oh boy, I really did get makeup on my shirt. <laughs> I always get foundation on my shirt. But I always have to have my makeup on, so this is a casualty. But he was like, you know, he, he complained to the doctor, he complained. And, you know, they're asking, well, do they give you anything at the nursing home? Obviously not. Because he probably gives them as hard of a time at the nursing home as he does at dialysis. So, you know, you reap what you sow. I hope I'm being nice. Um, so the way that they were talking, the last thing I heard before I put on 3T and, you know, stopped actively eavesdropping, was that he was going for an x-ray of his foot because it really was swollen and it really didn't look good. But, I mean, the doctor looked at it, and I don't think that he could find, like, evidence of, like, you know, puncture wounds from a bite or something. So, I don't know. We'll see how this plays out. Like I say, I'm not worried about Saturday because I'm not going in Saturday, so I don't have to see his ass at all until Tuesday, <laughs> which means fantastic weekend for Tiffany. Um... I don't have to see him. I get to see Terrell. And then Terrell wore camo, too. Win-win. Come on. So, okay, that aside, I'm trying to do this in order. Um, okay. So, when I got in the van this morning, I heard about the stupidest fucking rule that they were taking care of. I'm through with Noisy Negro. <laughs> That's all I had to say about him. I'm not mad at him. Amazingly. But this is just so fucking stupid. That, that's the only way I can say it. Is, okay, I guess I'm not posting this to Twitter for 3T because I'm really cursing now. It's so fucking stupid that it makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Now, I'm used to every time I get in the van, you know, I get in. Good morning. Hey, how are you doing? Notice what I just said. Hey, how are you doing? You know, this is the driver speaking to me. I'm fine. How are you? continue on our merry f***ing way. So I get in the van this morning, and one of the drivers, who's a very sweet woman, she says that she can't ask me how you're doing anymore. And I'm like, why the hell not? Apparently, somebody was a jackass, called in and complained, and said that saying, being courteous, and saying, how are you doing, was like, how did they say that? An invasion of privacy? And, you know, they thought that the person was like, asking about their medical... No, hell no. 
Okay, I don't know how they do it in the rest of the country, but I'm here in Texas. I'm a southerner. You've heard me on the radio all the time. Hi, how are y'all? That's just what the hell you say when you greet someone. I say that all day, every day. I, I mean, if I go into a room and there's people there, hey, how are y'all? Hey, how are y'all? I mean, that's me all day, every day. That's just not me being cutesy for 3T on the radio. This is how Tiff speaks generally. How are y'all? <laughs> that That's how I talk. Some people like it. Some people don't. I hate my voice. And, you know, the person is telling me, the driver is telling me that they can't say that anymore. So, you know, I mean, I've been busting about that all day today. I mean, I just think, well, it's common courtesy. I mean, how else do you greet somebody? You know, when you're picking them up from somewhere or something, you know? I mean, just, it, it's so stupid. I mean, what, who the fuck, <laughs> basically, who the fuck had such a stick up their ass that it offended them that somebody was being courteous to them? Now, I can understand if somebody's sitting down with you and looking at you and saying, okay, well, where are you going? What are you going to have done? And who's doing this to you? No, no, no. No. How are you? So, when I got in the car this afternoon, same driver, I decided to be a smartass. So, I looked at her. I'm not going to say her name. But I looked at her, insert name. Um, what happens if somebody gets sick in the car? I've, I've ridden where there have been people who've thrown up in the car. The first thing somebody says when somebody's throwing up, are you okay? Do you need help? They can't do that now. I come from dialysis. Very easily this tape could come off and I could bleed everywhere. I bled out in dialysis earlier today. Um, I always miss my white shirt, though. But I go to bleeding. Anybody goes to bleeding, are you okay? Do you need help? They can't do this anymore. So I'm like, well, what happened? Nobody thought this shit through. I'm basically like, well, if there's an emergency on board, you have to assess the situation. Part of assessing a medical emergency is, are you okay? How are you doing? I mean, like, why the hell would I be offended? Who the hell would be offended? <laughs> I you know, I'd rather get in the car and have somebody... Speak to me and acknowledge my presence joining the vehicle, other than being a stone statue and not speaking at all. Like, I don't know who did it. I, I want to wish them bad luck, but I'm not going to. But for just being a jackass on that level, for no reason, needlessly, really? Like, how pitiful are you? How unhappy is your life that you consider somebody being nice to you, an invasion of privacy? Uh... I pray for your soul, if you have a soul. Because <laughs> apparently I don't think anybody with a soul would act this way. Now, for the last portion that God said made me incredibly happy. <laughs> I'm probably enjoying this a bit too much. Um, there's a driver whom I stopped riding with because I did not feel safe with this woman. And it had been a long time coming because she's always on her fucking phone while she's driving, even more so than what's necessary for the drivers to communicate back and forth. Um, she's just a mess. <laughs> um, I don't like her. I, I just never got the right vibe off of this woman. And, you know, it's what really came to a head about it was I don't like to be political. This was ages ago. Now, before I get into this, whole political arena. She spoke about how she had this wreck one day. Um, and this was a Saturday morning. I remember I was going to dialysis and she had had this particular wreck in the company vehicle the day before, that Friday. And she was telling me and the other passengers how, you know, this car just came bumping over all of these yards and rammed into her and this, that. And she was like, why are you saying this and steady texting on your motherfucking phone while you're driving. <laughs> Why are you telling me this? I, if, look, unless you've had a wreck and you were mortally wounded or something, I don't want to hear about any sort of wreck while your life is in, while my life is in your hands driving down the street. You know, just leave me out of that circle of information, please. Now, back to the political shit. Um, I 
I really should have my own radio show. <laughs> but, um, no, I should not with all this cursing. Um, this particular woman, now, she's a white lady. I'm very obviously not white. And I'll never forget, it was me, another black gentleman who happened to be blind, her, and another white lady. And I remember it was weird because we were, like, segregated almost on the bus because she and the white lady were on one side and me and the black guy were on the other side. And I don't know what the hell happened, but somehow we got to talking about the Confederate flag. Now, let's keep in mind, I'm in Texas. I'm a southerner. I'm in a, I'm in a red state. Um... I don't like talking about anything that has to do with the Civil War or slavery or anything because I'm quite sure we're all from the same area. So at some point, I'm quite sure some of her relatives might have owned some of my relatives. So, you know, and they're, they were really, really trying to put the meaning behind the Confederate flag over on me. Now, if I'm, if I'm offending somebody right now, um, I'm sorry, I'm entitled to my own opinion. <laughs> But my opinion, as far as the Confederate flag goes, is it's not a symbol of Southern heritage or anything like that. To me, it's just a symbol of slavery. Because this is the banner that Johnny Reb and all the Confederates was waving when um, they were fighting the Union, seceded from the country, declared themselves their own country, put in their own president of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis. Yes, I know my history. Jefferson Davis, because unfortunately, I live in Jefferson County, which is named after Jefferson Davis. So, yeah, there's that. I always thought Jefferson County, for my area, was named after Thomas Jefferson, which is still bad, because he had a whole bunch of children with his slave, Sally Hemings. So, basically, you're fucked either way you go with Thomas Jefferson and his little rainbow tribe, or Jefferson Davis who we're really stuck with. Um, so they were passionately defending the flag. Well, it doesn't stand for slavery. It doesn't stand for it doesn't. I say, really? Because every time I see a, uh, a, a Civil War reenactment, y'all are fighting about slaves with a flag over your head. You know, I mean, there's still places in now, in 2017, with Confederate memorials to Confederate soldiers. They're dismantling some in New Orleans right now. Which is bad because I, my roots, are in Louisiana. <laughs> so, you know, my parents' parents, both sides, came from Louisiana. So at some point, one of my relatives walked past that damn monument. Now, back to what I was saying, this particular nurse that was so fucking passionate about that Confederate flag and saying she had it at her house, and this and everything. Okay, I'm never going to your house. Because my father's a World War II veteran. I don't even have an American flag out front of my house. And my father fought in the war. <laughs> um, I know it's, 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 it's small, but it was just so nice to see this happen. Um, you know, after that whole interaction about the Confederate flag, I made a point of calling you to say, well, I don't feel safe with this woman. I don't want to ride with her anymore. And I haven't seen her in about two and a half years. So, you know, that's fantastic. Um, I take care of business <laughs> when I can. But today, um, she dropped off a gentleman. And I looked at the guy. I opened the door for the guy because he was on a walker. And I wasn't aware of it until I let the guy in. And, you know, he walked over, you know, walked into the building. And I walked over to get into another van. And she was on the phone on another van. And she had gotten locked out. This this is just so fucking awesome. She got locked out of her van. Not only was she locked out of her van, she left her phone in the van so she couldn't call headquarters. That's why she was on the other driver's phone in her van. Um... Keys locked in, completely locked out. Um, even her cigarettes were in the car. She's trying to bum a smoke. And the girl that was driving me home, she quit smoking. So she didn't have any cigarettes on her. This woman was losing her mind. And what was even better about it was the car was locked with her locked out, no means of getting back in. The engine was also running. <laughs> so 
So the car sitting there is idling. It's possibly still idling now as I'm making this video. And I mean, my eyes are dancing. I'm just, I'm, I'm evil. <laughs> my, my, I'm looking at my face on my little screen and I'm just, I mean, I'm like Michael Jackson level happy right now. Like, <laughs> um, she was locked out. So she's calling headquarters and saying, now, in the meantime, the car is still running, eating up gas. And I'm quite sure they're all on the walkie-talkies. Her little thing is probably still saying, you know, so-and-so's ready to be picked up, so-and-so's ready to go, so-and-so this and that. And I'm just like, oh, boy. <laughs> so I don't know what's, what can be done or what's going to be done. I don't care. I'm just glad that I was able to be a part of to see that happen in real time instead of having to hear about it afterwards. <laughs> And I'm just like, I've waited two years to come up. And it's like that. Because I thought the bitch had quit. So. <laughs> and she hadn't. And, you know, I'm just like, I'm glad I got to see this. <laughs> and I know um, somebody's probably going to say, well, Tiffany, you're being a little too happy about this. I am not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> okay, well, that's it for me. Because I still have some writing to do. And hopefully... By tomorrow, I'm hoping I will be able to have the new story, the campaign, up. Here's hoping. I'm not saying it's going to. I'm just like, I hope it's up sometime this weekend. So, well, not sometime. I hope. I'm aiming to get it up tomorrow, so we'll see. All right, so thank you for watching. Um, have a good day. <laughs> and later. Really, I'm a nice person, but just when I see somebody get their come up, it's, it's just like...